there is one thing that is surprisingly easy to do, but quite complex and very interesting. It's this motif. Sounds familiar, right? I say it's easy because usually people pick it up very fast and very often they are themselves surprised at how easy it comes. But wait, if you've never done this before and you are not able to do it like that instantly, don't worry. In this video I will explain how it works and we'll practice it together. And if you already know how to do it, we'll see different ways to practice it that may make it less easy and more interesting. So let's have some fun with that because yes, practicing rhythm is fun. Hi, this is Guillermo Guillen for Flamenco Maps. Welcome to my channel. Whether you dance flamenco, you sing, you play guitar, you play palmas, you play cajon, or you just love it and you want to better understand how it works, today let's talk about this little rhythmic element that is very common in music in general and in flamenco in particular. It is called three against two or three over two or just three two. You'll understand why in a bit. So listen to this carefully again. This rhythmic cell has a sonichete, a little rhythmic melody that is usually easy to remember and easy to reproduce. With our usual syllable system, we can sing it this way. Ta ta ka ta, ta ta ka ta, ta ta ka ta, ta ta ka ta, ta. Easy, right? So that's it, a new rhythmic pattern. Practice it a lot and I see you in the next video. But you know me, right? And you know that we'll go further than that because this little pattern is much more interesting than it seems and it's a great way to improve our sense of rhythm in different ways. As I always tell you, one of the interesting characteristics in flamenco is that rhythmically a lot of different things happen at the same time. Things that don't work the same way but combined together create a new whole with a new feel. So the easy way is to do it in a linear way, just one dimensional. Thinking of it like a three beat compass with the tas being the beats. One, two, three, one, two, three. Ta, ta, ka, ta, 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 ka, ta. And we can play this phrase with the palmas. Ta, ta, ka, ta, 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 ka, ta. On the guitar. Ta, ta, ka, ta, 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 ta. On my board. Ta, ta, ka, ta, 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 ka, ta. Or on anything. And yes, it works, but what really happens here is something else. Maybe without realizing it, here we combine two different layers or two different patterns that do two different things at the same time. If you look at it closely, you'll see that each hand, each side does a different pattern. What's happening basically is that one pattern is doing three notes while the other one is doing only two notes. And that's why it's called a polyrhythm, different rhythms at the same time. And three against two or three over two or three two because one part is doing three while the other part is doing two. But all this in the same time frame and this time frame can be a beat or a compass, it doesn't matter, it works the same at any levels of the rhythm. So let's see these two different patterns, how they look. The two patterns start together on the first note and then they cross, they separate ways and then they meet again on the next first note and so on. It's the same thing as when you are two people of different sizes walking side by side at the same speed. Depending on the size of your legs and the length of your steps, you'll need different number of steps to cover the same distance. In our example, with long legs you need two steps and with shorter legs you need three steps. So now you can see that instead of the one dimension ta 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 we have Ta, 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 but in two dimensions. So if I recap quickly, when we do this, ta, ta, ka, ta, 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 ka, ta, we are actually doing this, ta, 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 and this, ta, 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 at the same time, ta, 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 ta. 
But now you are able to separate the two elements and to listen to them independently, right? We find this polyrhythm very often in music, and there are even some music pieces that are entirely based on this. For example, you can go and listen to the opening of Glassworks by Philip Glass. And one interesting thing is that we can visualize this on the music sheet even without knowing how to read music. I told you at the beginning that the whole pattern is actually quite easy to do and to remember, right? And it's thanks to this little melody that works so well, it's sonichete. That specific sonichete, that rhythmic melody, is the result of the combination of the two patterns. And this is called the composite rhythm. It's another big word that you don't need to know, but I like precise words. The composite rhythm is really important because it gives direct access to the musical result. It's the one that we perceive first, the one that we feel, the one that we can remember easily without going through the whole intellectual process. This is also why many music teachers use sentences to remember the sonichete of a polyrhythm. In this case of three against two, we usually hear nice cup of tea. Nice cup of tea. Nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea. So now that we can feel the composite rhythm and at the same time understand and feel the different patterns, we can practice this in many different ways. Vámonos! So here let's say that our time frame, our cycle is one compass. We have at the same time, in the same space, a compass of three beats and a compass of two beats. As I said, they both start together, then comes the second beat of the three beat compass, then comes the second beat of the two beat compass, and then the last beat of the three beat compass. And we've come full circle and we start again. So let's see with El Tito now. El Tito marks only the cycle, the beginning of the cycle, and here it's 45 BPM, very slow. The first pattern divides the cycle in three beats or three steps. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. And the second pattern divides the cycle in two beats or two steps. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. First, we need to learn the sequence and the right alternation. This is very important. So let's do it a couple of times together very slowly and take time to synchronize your movements. I do it here, it might be easier for you because this sometimes is difficult. So you have to respect the alternation, it's fundamental, okay? So if I do the three beats pattern on the right hand and the two beats pattern on the left hand, it goes like this. Both, right, left, right. Both, right, left, right. Both, right, left, right. Both, right, left, right. Both, right, left. If you want to do it the other way with the three beats on the left hand and the two beats on the right hand, it's perfectly possible. Just respect the alternation. Both left, right, left. Both left, right, left. Both left, right, left. You have it? If you don't, just redo the exercise many times. And if it's too fast, always remember that you can slow down the video with the uh, YouTube tool there, down there, somewhere. So now let's try to do it, but without overthinking it. Just let ourselves be carried away by the sonichete. Just make sure that you really follow El Tito and that you really accentuate the first beat in order to get the feel of the beginning of the loop. Vamos! And now we are going to try to really become aware of the patterns separately while doing both at the same time. So while doing this, we'll first look at our right hand. 
and really connect with the three beat cycle here and even count the three beats at the same time. Vámonos! Look at it first. One, two, three, 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 one. Try to really connect with this part while keeping this one out of the corner of your eye. You don't want to completely drop this side, okay? Because you always need to control the synchronization. Like you can pay different percentages of attention to the different part. Like 90% of my attention is here, but 10% of my attention is here. Let's do this one a bit longer. Connect and count. One, two, three, one, two, three. And keep an eye on the other one. One, two, three, 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 one. And now you guessed it, I imagine we do the same with the other side, the two beats side. Vamono. Connect with it. And count. One, two, one, two, one, two, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. The feel is really different, right? And now just let's go from one to the other without stopping. Vamono. How is it going? Another thing you can do is just stop one of them in the middle and then resume. Another way would be to repeat all the first exercises but switching sides. What you were doing on the right hand, now do it on the left hand and vice versa. And frankly that's difficult because there is always one side that is easier than the other one. So you see there is already a lot to do with that. But usually when you do the two parts yourself it's quite easy because you can always rely on the sonicete, on the nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea, and the body sensation that is quite easy to find. This can get a bit more difficult when the roles are divided and different people do the different parts. I'll play the two beats pattern with the palmas. So now we'll ask El Tito to do the three beats pattern. Three beats and 135 BPM. Un, dos, tres, un, dos, tres. And while doing this, try to really find the connection with El Tito and to find the nice cup of tea, but being separate. Nice cup of tea, nice cup of tea. This is something that is used very, very often por burería, like with this palmas pattern, for example. My first two palmas are doing this three against two. So, un, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. And I could continue the whole medio compass. But this is an exercise for another video.
And even in the guitar or in the cante, it can happen. And now let's try the other way around with El Tito doing the two beats pattern. One, two, one, two. So try all this and let me know how it goes in the comments. So why is it so interesting and important to understand and practice this? Once you have studied and practiced this pattern, you'll have internalized it in your rhythmic library forever. From now on, every time you hear it anywhere, you just identify it like this instantly. And if you instantly recognize it and you practice it, then you'll be able to reproduce it, to play it also instantly. And it's something that we do a lot, for example, when we are accompanying uh, the baile, a dancer, and we understand that the dancer is doing this, so we'll try to accompany, to go with it, to really follow the same pattern. Another important thing is not to get lost and not to get destabilized. Because if you don't know and you never practice this pattern, it's very easy to get destabilized by it, by the dancer, by the percussionist or whoever, but they can really throw you out of the compass with that. And it's also very good for the precision, the rhythmic accuracy. If you play, you dance or you clap or whatever you do, it's really important to be precise and to be steady. You don't want to speed up or to slow down or to be unstable. Otherwise, we we'll lose the nice cup of tea. And one last thing, and maybe the most important, it develops the global listening. It trains you to listen to different things at the same time, to pay attention to different things at the same time, and to be aware on a more global level of everything that is happening. Very often, the lack of clarity and precision in a music group, and not only in flamenco, just in any music group, comes from the fact that everyone listens only to themselves and they forget about the group, about the band, and they don't pay attention to the whole, to the group, to the composite results. But we are doing music all together, so the important thing is the combination of all of us. And that's it for today. In other videos, we'll do other exercises and we'll see how this concept works in different layers of the rhythm. And it's fascinating. For now, thank you so much for watching. If it helps, you can also help me by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, sharing. Please also consider supporting my work on Patreon. I leave the link in the description. And also go and visit flamencomax.com where I explain all my classes, my courses, and my way of teaching flamenco online. I see you there till then. Don't forget, learn flamenco, make it fun, make it different, make it your own, and play palmas. Nice.